Way back in episode 2 of this series, we discussed a car that would go on to become one of the most popular episodes of Unsung Heroes. Japan's answer to the Hummer. Of course, I'm referring to the Toyota Mega Cruiser, an awesome car at the time, certainly a very undervalued one, and it's good to see, based on the views of that video, that it is getting more attention now. That is the whole point of this series, so I'm glad that it's doing its job. However, this episode, in a way, is bringing things back full circle because this is not Japan's answer to a Hummer, it is, of all places, Italy's answer to a Hummer. And of course, being Italian, certain things go without saying. It's much more flamboyant, much more focused on style rather than pure ruggedness, and you could argue that's kind of missing the point. <laughs> but again, they wanted to go out with a little bit of style to tempt potential buyers away from Hummers and Mega Cruisers, and of course, even stuff like Jeeps and Land Rovers as well. And of course, to the surprise of precisely no one, this car was not built with the intention of driving around Italy on the regular. It was designed for the Middle East, where it is much more adept at being used, because this car is 5.35 metres long, that's 18 feet. It's 2.2 metres tall, 7.3 feet in other words, which is a lot taller than a Hummer, and it's 2.28 metres wide, that's 7.5 feet. It weighs 3.2 tons dry, 5 tons fully loaded, and it has a 6.5 litre turbo diesel V8 with a 4-speed automatic and all-wheel drive. Now, to the discerning off-road enthusiast, some of those things should sound familiar. A 6.5 turbo diesel V8? Hmm, why does that sound familiar? Well, the reason why is obvious. It is a Hummer. This is not just Italy's version of a Hummer, it actually is one underneath. Same chassis, same engine. In fact, apart from the visual and interior changes, only two mechanical components are actually different. One being the exhaust, and the second being the handbrake, or e-brake, for our American friends. Instead of a traditional handbrake, it's put down in the footwell in a similar way to most SUVs these days. My SUV, for instance, has the same thing. Now, in terms of performance being based on a Hummer, of course it's not going to be that quick. 0-60 takes 18 seconds, although I'm sure it feels quicker than that when you're in a 5-ton car like this with 583 newton meters of torque which is 430 pound-feet. Of course, 200 horsepower isn't that impressive, but again, it's not a high-performance car in any traditional sense, but it is designed to, as I said, appeal to much more of that high-class market. The Hummer very much so sticks, for good reason, to its military roots. The Toyota, very similarly, does essentially the same thing. It's much more of a utilitarian vehicle than it is about style or fun or performance. This takes the totally different route of going all in on the wacky style and the luxury. And although you could say that sounds like a bad idea, I would actually say it's probably the smartest thing about this car. Because think about it, from a marketing and business point of view, Italy is never going to beat Hummer at their own game. If Toyota couldn't, then Italy certainly is not going to. So you have to think of another option. Well, what is the other option? The answer is self-explanatory. Instead of appealing to the militarized or commercialized aspects of the Hummer and Mega Cruiser audiences and customers, well, why not appeal to those who are buying it more as a status symbol rather than a tool? So it has the funkier looks, certainly a more unique vibe inside and out, and much more of an emphasis on the luxury and the comfort. Plus, interestingly, it's actually more practical than a Hummer or a Mega Cruiser as well, with a full six seat layout very, very opulently finished full leather interior. It's much more of an experience and a luxury car in that sense, rather than just a tool, as you could argue the other two are. Now, of course, the looks won't be for everyone, and unfortunately, it seemed that the looks weren't really for anyone, because although they planned to build 50 of these with a price tag of 500 grand each, they only ever built one. Now, it was originally planned to have a sheet steel body in production form. This one actually has a fiberglass body, so it would have been even heavier, in other words, which is probably the last thing it needed. And even the fuel tank, unsurprisingly, is massive. Everything about this car is massive. It's actually 160 litres divided between two tanks. Massive. And very, very expensive to fill. Around £200, here in the UK at least, 
per fill up and you're going to be at those filling stations very regularly even though it's not exactly a quick car incidentally the top speed is about 84 miles an hour which yeah for what it is ain't too bad but of course you're not buying this thing to be the fastest car around now curiously and this is one of the coolest things about the car it actually popped up on ebay of all places in 2008 somebody listed it on ebay for 700,000 pounds and although i'm not sure if it's sold or not it was certainly an ambitious price however for somebody who likes to collect weird stuff a sultan of brunei for instance it's certainly an interesting collector's piece to have and the beauty of it is if you do decide to buy it not only have you got yourself a one-off ultimate status 4x4 of the time in the year 2000 when incidentally it was shown at the geneva motor show you've also essentially just bought yourself a hummer so if it does break down finding the parts isn't going to be difficult at all just hope you don't rip one of the seats, because unfortunately, Coggiola is not around anymore. Now, incidentally, Coggiola, of course based in Italy, is a very small design house and coach builder who actually branched off, incidentally, from Ghia, because its founder, Sergio Coggiola, was an ex Ghia employee. And their most notable creation, from a design point of view, was probably a concept car for Saab, which some of you might be familiar with, called the Sonnet. Three. Unfortunately, though, after Coggiola's death, the company kind of died with him due to a lack of funds. So this car really is an unsung hero. It's one of the ultimate exclusive variants or knockoffs of the Hummer concept. And if you thought the Mega Cruiser was rare, well, this one puts it to shame. It's almost like the Spiker or Koenigsegg of the, the Hummer world. And even though it certainly isn't to everyone's taste, I actually kind of like how wacky it is. Would I buy one? Absolutely not. <laughs> Certainly not for £700,000. But at the same time, I like how oddball it is. I like that they went out of their way to try and make their own little niche within the utility market. And had they produced this car maybe even a few years later, maybe even today, for instance, as some kind of fully electric monster SUV, well, who knows? It actually could have become a success. But at the time, it didn't. And for now, that seems to be the end of the story. But overall, I believe it is a car that's worthy of inclusion in this series. And of course, if you are a fan of it, you should click the link down in the video description, go over to the free community chat on the Discord server, and actually go into the voting poll and vote on this car if you like it. And of course, just like with episode 100, when we get to episode 200, which is quite a way off, we are going to count down another top 10 community favorites from Unsung Heroes. So if you like this car, jump over there and vote on it. And of course, if you're new to the channel, be sure to click this playlist on screen and check out some of the other episodes, maybe even episode two with the Mega Cruiser. But until next time, I'll see you then. And for now, as always, thanks for watching.